So what I'll do is I will teach for a little bit and then give you the opportunity that if you need, if you have your money with you, I'll let you go get the book and go with that. Yeah. Just now? Let's see. Bren, right? I got you here. I did mark you and then I unmarked you. Yes. Thank you for double checking because, again, I do make errors. Okay, so we started. Yes. And I, I'm pretty sure I unmarked you. And let's see. You're Jason, right? Yeah. Okay. Sophia, I have you here. And Jason, let me unmark you. Submit. Signature design. All right. Save. Jason, were you here yesterday? No. Okay. Welcome back. So we started on these notes yesterday, and we're gonna finish them. And I didn't have to give them the time. But again, those notes are good, and that the that packet I gave you yesterday is good. Probably until Tuesday, when you come to class on Tuesday, you would have to have the uh, book. And again, I there should be some time today because I don't have a whole lot to teach, and there'll be time to work on the assignment. And I tell you, I thought we it looks like there are like four of the exact same problems on the assignment. I don't know why. But uh, you would have the opportunity, as long as you have your ID, uh, go over to Bare Necessities. It should be open. And as long as you have the $5 or credit card, um, you could buy. Yeah. It's the next building over, so the IC building. Cool. All right. So we were talking yesterday, just kind of was talking about some integers. We talked about addition as a basic counting principle. And then the whole concept of subtraction of takeaway, where somebody might take something from you. Uh, we talked about those. Uh, multiplication, we realized the big thing on multiplication is if you have a positive times a positive, you would get a positive answer. We know that. Then you go positive times a negative, or a negative times a positive, you would get a negative answer. And then two negatives being multiplied together, you would get a positive. Okay. Now, there are sometimes you might have a whole string of items you're putting together. So if you have an odd number of negative signs, you would get a negative answer. So if you want like negative 3 times negative 5 times negative 10, you know, yes, you're going to multiply just like normal, but you have a negative and a negative and a negative, which means you'd have a negative answer. If you have an even number of, of negative signs, then your answer is going to be positive. So if you had negative 5, negative 8, negative 10, negative 20, yes, it's going to be a big number, but all those negatives being multiplied together because there's four of them, it would result in a positive answer. And I think you, all of you would probably know something about that. Okay, and then we started talking about square roots and squaring, which is uh, you know a tool that's used when you do the square root. The square root you have something that's called a radical sign, and the radical sign doesn't just work for square roots. Up here, in other math classes, sometimes I thought I had this set up for that. This. Uh, Sometimes there's a, a number that'll be there, which means you could take a th third root, a fourth root, a fifth root, a tenth root, a 265th root. I mean, it, it gets a little silly, but right now we're just dealing with square roots. And square root just basically means the number that's underneath, what two numbers would multiply together, being the exact same number to get that. And there are perfect squares. There's an infinite amount of perfect squares. And we talked about yesterday, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc goes on forever and ever. 
you know, what's the biggest perfect square? I, I don't know. I don't have that out of the top of my head. Yes, I'm sure you can go on to some website and say, oh, this must be the biggest perfect square. I, but then once you get to the biggest perfect square, if you just square that, then you're going to get even a bigger number. That's a perfect square. So it's pretty much impossible to find all the perfect squares, but they are indeed um, a part of math. Now, let's talk about something before we go much further. Okay, so there's a question that comes up often in math classes. And it's usually when there's some weird deranged, looks like a miracle occurred to y'all, but the teacher's like, yeah, it's this way. Things kind of sort of get a little tougher. Now, I will tell you this, and I'm probably the only math teacher that's ever going to say this. Okay, there are going to be concepts that you learn in this math class and every math class from here on out that you might not ever use that concept in your day-to-day -day operations. But, I think I told you all yesterday, I am certified to teach psychology as well. And one thing that I've started to understand with psychology is the brain develops in a certain way. And what it does is by you doing hard processes, such as math, you develop synaptic pathways that allow you to think at a higher level. Okay? Now, my Aunt Diane, I am so glad she is not a blood relative. She's married to my uncle. Aunt Diane is not a smart person. Aunt Diane is the person, if you ever go to like a family reunion and you're in the house, you make sure that the room you're in has two ways out and jumping out the window is an option because you will lose intelligence when you talk to my Aunt Diane. I swear to you, I don't think she breathes. This is how she talks. So today I was watching on Oprah and Oprah had this neat, this neat little act of people on the, the show that they were talking about what they ate for dinner, and they had a really good recipe on the dinner that was, uh, you know, just chicken with peaches. It was really a neat kind of thing, and, and she just keeps talking. And you walk away from her, and she has no idea that you've left the conversation. But you come back, and it's like, and, you know, that peach recipe was there, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I've been gone for an hour. I can't deal with it. I don't think my Aunt Diane passed, like, second grade math. I, I mean, honestly, you, you talk to anyone in my family, it's like, Oh, Aunt Diane's going to be here. Oh, no. Um, there's a highway right there. If I get run over by a car, does that mean I have to go? I mean, it, it, it's that bad. And I know that we all have somebody in life that you're going to be looking at going, oh, no. I, I'm losing brain cells having this conversation with this person. Now, I know my Aunt Diane is a nice person. I really do. I know she's a caring, loving individual. But, oh, my goodness, I am so glad they used to live in New Jersey, and now they live in North Carolina, and neither of those places is close to Colorado. And I was blessed enough as a kid that in 1973, when I was three years old, we moved to Arizona. We left Jersey and went to Arizona, and there was a lot of country in between us. Now, I was too young to really understand at the time, other than I'm moving to a place that has cowboys and cowboy boots and cowboy hats. Yeehaw! Okay? Because Arizona was the wild, wild west back in the 70s. It was kind of a different place. Now, it's just like it looks like every other city USA, other than it's like 119 degrees, you know, 400 days in a row. But, you know, it was nice. But getting back to, like, what doing a problem in math, a tougher problem in math, a tougher math class, what it does to your brain is it allows your brain to develop pathways to critically think at a different level. Now, we all know some people on their phones have a lot of social media. Agreed? Now, don't get me wrong. There's funny stuff to look at online, and there's entertaining things, but I don't use it as my sole source to do so. You know, if you saw if you saw something online, hey, this was posted by my friend that knew somebody who works for
called me son, but I know I'm dumb in a lot of categories. But uh, there are just some, there are some people out there that they can drag you down socially and emotionally. So if you're able to think at a higher level and escape that kind of situation, math is a true pathway to allow your brain to develop and think at a higher level. Okay, and not at a bad level, just able to be able to problem solve life events. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna be walking down the street going, okay, I got two points. Got these points. Yeah, they're good. I could find the slope. You're not gonna do that. Okay, but the thought process that takes place in the developmental stages of algebra, which move into geometry, which move into a second algebra class, which move into numerous other math classes. And I'm not saying everyone needs to go get a degree in math. I know that's not for everybody, and that's okay. And as a mathematician, I don't think I'm smarter than everybody. I certainly know people who I've taken, taken way more math classes than, and they are a lot smarter than I. And I know that. I'm not trying to be the prima donna saying that's who I am. I'm just saying that the, the math that you developmentally learn will allow you to think at a different level, which I think is pretty cool. But I do know this. There will be concepts that will be up here, and a lot of times you'll hear the comment, and I'm sure you've heard this at some point in a math class, when are we going to have to use this in life? I mean, that's a real question that comes out. And that's usually a question that is asked by a student that, oh, no, I just got totally frustrated by this concept. If I say this and belittle what we're learning, it means I don't have to know it. Well, unfortunately, the test is going to result in you trying to prove that you know how to know it. And hopefully I convey the information in a good enough way that you'll know it. But square or square roots does become a tough concept. Square roots become a tough concept when you have things like root 17 or root 19. You can't find those exact values. Yes, I know you can find a square root key on your calculator. You can find it on the calculator on your phone. It's going to give you a decimal that's really big. But... They had, they had to write subroutines for square root properties on calculators to allow the processor to stop at a certain level. If they didn't, you would hit square to 17 and be going, it, it's still thinking. It's still thinking. It'll think until the battery is done. The processor can't process how many decimals it needs to go out. And the whole concept of infinity is a really hard concept for people to fathom for all people to fathom. There's not some people going, oh yeah, infinity, yeah, it's just a big number. No, it's infinity, it's forever. It goes to the positive direction, it goes to the negative direction. How far is negative infinity from positive infinity? Infinity. Yeah, but from zero to infinity is infinity, right. From zero to negative infinity is also infinity, right. So positive infinity to negative infinity is still infinity? Yes. Wait a minute, I want a numerical breakdown of it. You can't get it. Kind of silly. Uh, squaring is just when you are raising something to a power. So this is a little diagram saying if I square 3, I get 9. If I take the square to 9, it goes back to 3. And we get to a point later where we find out when we have to take the square root of both sides that we get two answers because of what we're doing. Because, again, when you're talking about positive and negative numbers, you're talking about a distance from a certain point. The majority of the point that we will be dealing with is 0. Okay, so the last thing is just comparing. You have greater than or less than. And this is always kind of strange because, you know, if I gave you these two numbers, 10 and 11, which number is the bigger number? 11. Why is 11 a bigger number, though? It has more. It has more, but what does that also mean? It's higher on the number line. It's higher on the number line, so it's further from zero. So 11 is the bigger number, and I know that when I was in elementary school, and perhaps you had this same teacher, you, they say, oh, you had the alligator teeth eat the bigger number, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a great way to kind of think about it. But then the hard thing is, is when you have something like this, something like that, it's like, well, which one's the bigger number? Well, if you just look at the 7 and you look at the 3, you know the 7's a bigger number. But because you only have three decimals on the three and you have four decimals on the seven, what, what are they having to be the zeros? 
the 0 0.003 is a larger number than the 0 0.000, 0 0.0007. Okay, so that becomes kind of a goofy thing. And then when you look at things that are equal or equivalent, it should be quite obvious. So that's what I have for the notes. Did I finish what you had as far as notes, I think? Yeah. yeah. Okay, as far as the first one, I'm not going to go on too much further. So the next... Next item at the bottom of the page says page three and four. And yes, I understand some of the questions do indeed repeat. But I would like you to try, and you're trying to get all four points come tomorrow. You have the opportunity to start it now. I would like you to do one through 48, all of them. Okay? Now, here's something to know. Yes, I am recording my lesson, so this lesson is on Schoology, which is fine, but there's also one other location on Schoology, and I have the odd answers on Schoology that you can look at, okay? So, I'm going to stop. Any questions for me? Yes? I have a question, but I already answered it. Oh, looks like you're doing other things then. Sound good? Yeah. Um, That'll be your homework. I will be checking that off for tomorrow. So I'd like it done now to get a good start on it. If you have your $5 and you have your student ID and you had not purchased your book, follow all that? Yeah. You can go ahead and walk over to Bear Necessities and get your book. Make sense? If you don't have it, then don't worry about it. Yeah. Just run real fast. No. You don't need your ID to show them. It's just that the administration might stop you if you don't have an ID. So just act like it's below your hair. Can I bring my phone to check my balance? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you need to grab your phones if you're going over there. And I'm going to stop recording.